On October 20th, 2020, Microsoft started the rollout of the Windows version 2082 update. This is the 10th feature update after the original release. But unlike the previous 2004 update, it's a minor update that only ships with a small set of features and relatively minor improvements. So do not hold your breath for anything major. But 20H2? What on earth happened to 2009? Microsoft really needs to make up its mind in regards to its nomenclature of Windows 10 updates. The 20H2 stands for the second half of 2020. Perhaps this switch was because the previous updates were named 2004 for April 2020, but it wasn't released until the end of May. And the same release tracks can be seen for most of the updates that were released a month or so after the namesake. If Microsoft stays on this track, the next release slated for April 2021 will be named 21H1, followed by 21H2. Or perhaps they will call the major update of the year 2104 and the minor second half update will be named 21H2. Who knows at this point? Hi, this is Steve Staves. And the aim of my videos is to help you make your computing experience easier. So, in this video, I am going to show you how to get this update now, instead of waiting, as this rollout is going to be slow and gradual, which means that some of you might not get this update before Christmas. But this is really part of Microsoft's aim to do better troubleshooting and support, and also to not flood their servers. Then we'll step through the nine major update areas that this release improves upon. There are, of course, security rollups and other minor issue fixes in this update, but for the sake of time, we'll skip over those. So hop on board and let's have a look at what Microsoft has given us in the October 20H2 update of Windows 10. By default with Windows 10, you would go into settings, you click on update and security, and the Windows update would show up in the list. But unfortunately, that's not the case here. But to get it quicker, close down Windows Update, open up your web browser, and do a search for Download Windows 10 Update Assistant. Click on the first link that you see in the list, and then on the right-hand side, click on Download the Update Assistant. Once the page loads, you can either update now or download the tool. I prefer to download the tool, so click on it, save the file. Once it's saved onto your hard drive, run the file and accept the license terms when that screen pops up on your terminal. Close off your browser. And the two options are to either upgrade this PC now or create installation media. Definitely choose the create installation media and the architecture and everything will be set by default according to your system. So just click on next when that screen pops up. Your options are to burn it to a USB flash drive or choose an ISO file. Personally, I always do the ISO file because then you have it for future use. And quite often I find that USB drives can actually fail. So save the file, name it whatever you want to call it. I always call mine very detailed so I know exactly what I've downloaded. In this case, I'll call it the Windows 10 October update. Download the file, it saves it to your hard drive so if something happens, you have the file to rerun it or to use it on another computer. Once it's downloaded, browse to your documents folder and double click on the ISO file. Windows 10 would automatically mount those files. So click on setup.exe. And there's a couple of screens that will pop up once the Windows 10 update is underway. You can close off all other windows on your terminal. Click on Next. Next again. And one final time, you'll have to click on Next to, to start the install. So click on Install, and away you go. Users with advanced monitors can now change the refresh rates of the monitor. Just click on Settings. Once you're in settings, click on System, Display, scroll down Display until you see Advanced Display Settings. Then from there, scroll down on the page and you'll see the refresh rate. Now you can change it there instead of having to use the AMD or the NVIDIA control panel to change the refresh rate of your monitor. Up next is Microsoft Edge. With the current update, they've now put Microsoft Edge as your default browser. And if you click on Edge and go into Help, about Microsoft Edge. You'll see that it's 
the Chromium open source engine that is powering Edge. What that basically means is that any of the add-ins that were created for Chrome, so if you go into Chrome store, any of these add-ins should work in Microsoft Edge now, which makes it highly customizable and definitely worth the second look. My favorite change to this update is the theme aware start menu. Have a look at the difference between the new theme versus the old one where it's all boxed icons on the start menu. With the new one now, you can right click on your desktop, go into personalize and under colors, whichever color you select or whichever theme you select, your start menu will change according to those colors. It basically is a much crisper, cleaner, nicer look to the start menu. This next one is a relatively small update, but it's enough of an update to get many gamers excited. Xbox Game Pass has finally been added to the Xbox app under Windows PC. Alt-Tab is one of the most used keyboard shortcuts in Windows 10. Previously, you would press Alt-Tab to cycle between open apps. But with this latest update, if you have a look now, any open pages in Microsoft Edge, you can now switch between them with the Alt-Tab keyboard combination as well, which is really handy for those users that typically have multiple tabs at a time open. With two-in-one devices and a touch screen, the new tablet posture improvements are welcome. The enhancements include a more spacious taskbar, larger hitboxes in the file explorer, and the automatic pop-up of the touch keyboard when tapping into text fields in the desktop environment. If your device doesn't have a touch screen, the Action Center will no longer show the tablet mode button, so you don't enable it by accident. There have been some notification improvements from Microsoft. So now when you see the notification pop up in the bottom, there is an X in the corner that you can just click on to close it. And also when you click on the actual notifications in the bottom right corner, there's usually an icon associated with the program so you know exactly which program it is now. So just some minor improvements in terms of notifications. The new personalized taskbar for me is almost a non-feature. It would only take effect the first time you sign into a computer and if you sign into a computer with a Microsoft enabled account. If you sign in with a Microsoft enabled account, you get your standard taskbar. But if you ha also have an Xbox Live account, when you sign in, you'll see the Xbox Live account on the taskbar. And then if you have an Android phone linked to your account and you sign in for the first time, you will see that Android phone icon on the taskbar which to me is not a big deal because you can manually add all of these anyway. Microsoft's plan is to eventually move everything that you see in the control panel out of here into the Windows Settings app. The latest item to be moved is System. So if you click on System now, it immediately brings you to the About page in the Windows Settings app. Everything that was under System is now listed here. A couple of things to note. Now, all of these text fields can now be copied to your notepad so you can give it to a technician if it's needed or to save the information about your computer. The other items that were under system that you might be looking for, such as remote, renaming the PC, etc., are all on this page as well. Just simply scroll down here and at the bottom you'll see the related settings. There are a few other enhancement that, enhancements that Microsoft has done, but this is the main one that's taken place this round. And I'm sure next year when they come out with the next major update, more of those control panel icons will be moved into settings as well. Well, that brings to an end the video on Windows 10, the October update version 20H2. Hopefully you got as much out of this as what I got out of it actually making the video. If you have a moment, please do check out my other two videos over here. One is the iPhone 12 Pro Max cameras and how they could benefit you and what makes that such a fantastic new phone from iPhone. The second one is YouTube and why people always ask you to subscribe. There is a reason behind it. So if you have a moment, do check out that video. Thanks for stopping by. Have a fantastic day, folks. Bye now.